Good morning. This is Cheryan Kurvela, business mentor and a coach, uh, working with the SME sector for the last 10 years uh, with a lot of clients across different sectors. Uh, in my earlier video, which was the section one of this uh, uh, series, uh, I spoke about the kind of challenges that entrepreneurs are going through right now in, in light of the corona uh, situation. And I had shared five focus areas or tips which I think immediately every entrepreneur should ideally be focusing on. Uh, in this video, I will spend a little bit more time on each of those five so that you know we could uh, get a better uh, idea in terms of what all could be possibly done. Right? So in the, in the first point I had mentioned about was cash flow, managing your cash flow. You know, to manage your cash flow, you need to know about your cash flow in terms of where you are, uh, what are the critical outstandings that are there from different clients, some of the old outstandings, some of the overdue outstandings. Uh, it's quite likely as SMEs, many of your uh, outstandings are from large corporates. Right? Now, large corporates are also affected, but they possibly are not as affected in terms of cash flow as uh, smaller uh, entrepreneurs like you would be. So I think this is the really the best time to personally reach out to your clients, reach out to the senior most people in those clients where your payments are stuck up and say, look, at this point of time, paying salaries for our employees and keeping our show running is very, very critical for us and for the economy, uh, we certainly need your support. I think that's that's very important. So I think uh, second one is reach out to some of your vendors. They also would be struggling, partners, and, and request for you know uh, delayed uh, payments to the extent that is mutually agreeable so that you know, you're actually easing out your situation for the month of April and May. That's most important. Third important thing is to really look in terms of the fact that the government has been proactive and has been looking at a lot of relief measures uh, from a statutory compliance point of view and things like that. Understand with your accountant in terms of what this actually would mean to you in terms of deferred payments uh, so that uh, as far as April and May is concerned, that there could be a better sense of what the situation could be in case the market conditions don't change. Right? So I think a lot of the initial focus should be around getting a fix in the cash flow because your subsequent decisions are going to get based on that. The second one, I think, is like I mentioned, is to make your employees feel valued. That's most important. At this point of time, uh, people are anxious and uh, you yourself are anxious because you don't know how you're going to manage your money and how you're going to manage your cash flow. But it's important to make them feel important. Tell them that, look, you know, you've been part of us for six months, one year, two years, ten years, whatever. And your being in the company is very critical for us. Uh, there could be certain roles which may become redundant in the next couple of months, but that's a call that you could take. But uh, the fact is that uh, definitely I would recommend assure them that the March salary is going to be taken care of in full because, I mean, the last week was not their fault that it happened. So the March salary should be taken care of in full. As far as April is concerned, uh, you would get back to them, uh, you know, somewhere around the first week of April or so saying that, look, now based on the visibility that we have right now and based on the way the situation is evolving in the country, right? Uh, definitely our uh, billing and revenues and collections are going to get affected in the month of April and maybe even in the month of May. So we may not be able to pay the regular salaries that we were paid, but we will get back to you and we'll try to be as fair as we can. So that's point number two, right? Make them feel important. Third point I mentioned was about communicate, communicate, communicate. Now, this is the time when they're all anxious, their families are anxious, they don't even know if some of them will have their jobs uh, beyond that, they don't even know how they're going to feed their families. So the more you communicate and make them feel a part of the family, today of course the only way to do it is virtually. Uh, we're all used to a face-to-face -face kind of a situation unless you've been in an IT company and you know used to remote working in some form. Most manufacturing companies and service companies are very, very manpower intensive, very face-to-face uh, -face intensive kind of interactions. So as an owner, you need to quickly transit the team to start getting comfortable with con calls, with Zoom calls, with Skype calls and things like that, so that the communication stays alive. It could be in WhatsApp. Use whatever means of communication, but make sure that employees are not left alone. At this point of time, they should not be alone. They, they're your employees. And if you don't, if you're not there for them now when they need you, don't expect them to be there for you when you need them. I think that's a very crit critical point, right? You're not doing a favor to them, right? You are, but at the same time, they're also there for you and it's a, it's a mutual win-win. So you have to keep it as a mutual win-win even in these difficult times, more so in these difficult times. 
The fourth point, I would, uh, fourth tip which I had mentioned about was these two weeks till middle of April or whenever is a time when all your employees are at home. Uh, they're also not used to being at home. Uh, they're at home, but they're not caught up with day-to-day -day operational pressures that were normally there because of the year and things like that. So I would recommend this is a good time to sort of really uh, involve them, uh, at least your leaders first, to relook at the vision, saying that, look, you know, we've been taking business so much for granted, but in the change scenario, will the vision remain the same? Will your market segments remain the same? What might have been a good target segment for you in, in, in the previous year may be totally uh, devastated in the coming one or two years. So relook at your market segment, relook at your product strategy, relook at your channel strategy, relook at your people strategy, relook at how you can be more productive and more efficient by using technology more. This is really, I think, right time to reinvent yourself as an organization, as a team, right? And I see this as an opportunity. It's a challenge, but I always say convert every challenge into an opportunity. Two weeks is a lot of time. Uh, if well planned out with you know scheduled Zoom calls, scheduled reviews uh, every two days or every three days with the leaders and with the teams, uh, you will find that all the planning and strategizing which you actually should have done for 2021, uh, which but possibly got compromised because of the day-to-day -day pressures, this is the best time. So moment operations get back on track, moment the market opens, moment a company opens, everybody is ready with what they need to do. There's no uh, lack of clarity. Everybody knows exactly what their role is in the bigger picture. And if the vision has been changed, they also have played a role in redefining the vision. So that's a big, big thing. Right? The important thing is, the fifth point is, do not stay out of touch with your clients, your key accounts, your past clients, your current clients, your potential clients. Don't be overbearing. Don't try to sell at this point of time, but just stay in touch, maintain relationships, tell them that look, you are there for them and you value the relationship with them uh, so that you know uh, many of them may have been ignored. Many of your old clients may not have been, you've not been in touch with them. It's a good time to get back in touch with them. Use WhatsApp, use uh, social media. Uh, you know, move more and more into the social media space because this is a good way to communicate with them uh, and stay in touch, share some of your success stories so they know that look, a lot of good work has happened which they're possibly not even aware of. And uh, don't forget your partners and vendors. They are the other critical resource for you because they are the ones who've been supporting you in all aspects. Right? Every small vendor has played a role in your operation functioning smoothly. Right, but be it production, be it canteen, be it taxi services, be it everybody. They are all struggling at this point of time, right? Don't ditch them at this point of time. And this is the time when you really need to be with them, communicate with them and say, look, let's let's uh, ride this wave together. It's not easy, but uh, you support us. We'll try to support you. And uh, let's get over this next one month or whatever period and come back stronger. So I think this is again a good time to rebuild relationships with a lot of people. And the last point which I mentioned is that this is not a battle you should be fighting alone. Right? Talk to your other fellow entrepreneurs, understand what they are doing. Talk to your entrepreneur groups, if your networks, if you're part of any networks, find out what they are doing. Uh, don't uh, look at the negative, focus on the positive side of whatever is happening. What are the best practices that people are adopting uh, and, and then see how best you can do that. Right? Important thing is that this is really the time and I would say Let's discover and recover. I think the theme of this whole video is about let's discover and recover. Uh, this is the right time to reinvent oneself and I would really suggest that we do that. Thank you.